All right, we are almost ready. I see a bunch of people already coming in. All right, first of all, I know you can't see my face just yet. How's my mic sound, though? Let me know, let me know. What's up, Chris? What's up, Mr. DiMaggio? What's up, Just Hurst? Hockey Wizard, Theo, Maxwell, what's up, man? All right, as we bring it ready, all right, cool. The uh, mic sounds good, awesome. Cool, guys. Um, all right, so while people um, come in, I'm gonna leave this intro screen on just for a little bit, and uh, we'll get started in like a minute or two. Let me uh, run upstairs, grab a new Sodi, and uh, we'll, we'll get ready pretty quickly. All right, cool. All right, give me a couple minutes. Uh, chat amongst yourselves so you guys have questions beforehand. Let me know. Of course, we're going to be looking at the Micklin resistance gear today. So really excited. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. All right, cool. So, oh, you lost this morning five to one. That's not good to trade you. Oh no. All right, we got a lot of people watching right now. That's cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks first of all to everyone for uh, giving me a second there. Let me move some windows over so I can read your chat and look like I'm paying attention. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, hello everyone. Let's see, uh, we got a whole lot of uh, names that sound familiar. And let's see, my mic is working, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Lots of people. Awesome. I guess you're all excited about uh, the Micklin pads, eh? I'm really excited too. You have no idea how crazy it has been for me to let those pads sit over there for the last 24 hours. It's been driving me nuts. Oh my god, SB10, you lost 19 to nothing. That is not a good day. Sorry to hear that. But, it, I mean, you got some exercise, right? Um, okay. Cool. Yes, I am back. I am not dead. I swear. I, I actually, like, one of the things that made me start posting videos again, first of all, the reason I took a summer break is, like, viewership is way down in the summer. Like, nobody really cares in the summer. It's not, hockey's not a summer sport. We may play uh, in the summer, but for whatever reason, we don't watch a lot of hockey in the summer. So, so I didn't put up any videos this summer. So I have five trillion videos that are left over from last year. Um, and so that video that I posted earlier this week um, is actually from last year. Um, or earlier this year or something. So I, I honestly have no idea what day it was. I mean, it could have been last year for all I know. Um, but anyway, um, so it's really exciting to, uh, to talk to you guys again. Um, and I know I did a live stream. I can't remember. I did a live stream before for a little while. Um, but uh, yeah, what is going on with? I'm red today. Oh, well. Okay. Um, anyway, so. If you guys have questions, um, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, what we are going to do today, and I am crazy excited about it, is looking at those Micklin pads. They are the Micklin Resistance pads. I don't know if I'm supposed to call them the Resistance 2 pads. There's a 2 in there. It's uh, R-E-S and then a 2 and then S-T-A-N-C-E. So I guess technically they're the Resistance 2 pads. Um, but we're going to look at uh, leg pads, glove, and blocker today. Crazy excited about these, especially because Micklin pads are not something you typically see in uh, North America. So what got me really interested in getting these pads is the fact that you know, you see them in the KHL. And um, especially like a few years ago, you saw a lot of sets in the KHL. And it's like, wow, what are these pads that are going on? Funny enough, I had talked with um, a KHL pro goalie. And uh, he said, well, they're really good pads, but they're really heavy. And so it's like, okay, you know, I wonder if I should wait a little while. So when I saw that more like modern construction pads were coming out of, uh, of Micklin, I knew that that was my, my chance to, uh, to, to look at them and then compare them to the pads I've been using, which are uh, typically the CCME Flex 3s and then um, the Bauer uh, 1S pads. Um, so that's, you guys have seen those quite a bit. Um, you saw on my Instagram, but you haven't seen the video yet of me wearing my old Coho 590s, uh, which are insanely heavy. Um, so, so there's a lot of uh, good and interesting stuff we're going to go through today. So um, this is going to be a little bit wonky since I have some new um, like overlays and stuff that I've created for specifically for this stream um, using some of my gaming stuff. Um, so, um, so first of all, one thing that we should probably do why don't we look at just really quickly uh, the Micklin website, which is right here. I'm going to kind of go down a little bit. There we go. So you guys can see the Micklin website here. Um, and so one of the common uh, questions that I've been getting for the past few days is like, or maybe it's more like a comment, but it's like, oh, I thought they were like just a Russian company and they didn't do anything in North America. And that's not true. They actually have a, a whole English website. You can still see some Cyrillic on here, some, some Russian. Um, but for the most part, a lot of these things are in English. So you can um, go through the website relatively easily. Here's the uh, the P970Z uh, Pros. Um, the great pad. And catchers, of course, going through all those. 
They have some really nice looking ones. They even have youth and junior and intermediate size gloves, uh, which I know some other manufacturers don't currently have, at least not in their, uh, their most current sets. And so they do have all this stuff on their website, um, even some pretty impressive looking uh, chest protectors. They look uh, really, really nice. If I can get that to come up here in a second. There we go. Looks sturdy. Looks a little bulky, but that's okay. Looks like you have some really nice flexibility down here though in the belly area. So that's, that's one thing that I always look for. And looking at the back, looks like you have lots of adjustability. That's not something we're gonna be looking at today, but nonetheless, I just wanted to show you guys on the website um, just really quick before we get too far, um, some of the cool stuff that they do have. Um, they also have pants, more of the uh, the square style. Reminds me a lot of the old, um, what was that? The 590 pants that had sort of the structure to them, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. And here with the inner belt, looks really nice. Good inner thigh protection. And then they also have some accessories. I've seen um, on their Instagram uh, pretty recently, um, they've been uh, looking at these uh, knee guards that look pretty impressive too. So, so anyway, I just wanted to quickly go through the website um, that they do have an English version. So all of you, to uh, all of you who do not speak Russian, uh, my Russian is not good anymore. Took it in college. Not so not so good anymore. But anyway, just kind of wanted to go through the website really quick. Um, okay, so I see... <laughs> nice, Maxwell. Um, I see uh, we have a crap ton of people in the chat, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then, like I said, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, just let me know. Happy to answer them. And in fact, if, if there are questions like even not about the Micklin pads, that's totally fine too. Um, but I'm going to start with the Micklin ones, and then I'll kind of go back through and talk about other things. I can see there's some questions about the CR1s um, and some other things and, and whatnot. So anyway, yeah, exactly. I wish I could fast forward. Yeah, I know what you mean. All right, cool. Uh, why don't we get started? So first things first, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch to the new overlay and kind of explain some things and put down my green screen. That way you guys can see behind me. So um, let me do this really quick. All right, there we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me know how it looks for you guys. Um, but, uh, so first of all, um, since you guys are seeing a whole lot of things over there on the left side, um, there are some pretty cool things I've been working on for the goalie crease network. One of the biggest things I get asked about, like really often are for like shirts and stuff like that. So, um, if you do, uh, want to buy some shirts or towels or whatnot, they have the goalie crease network logo. You can see the, uh, the thing up there. Um, in addition, um, I have created a Discord channel. If you're not familiar with Discord, it's sort of like a chat program. Um, I guess I should look over here, right? Kind of over here now. Um, let me bring this window over here so I can look like I'm talking to you guys. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit wonky for a second. Um, but uh, like I said, Discord, um, it's a goalie chat. So um, one of the things I was thinking about doing, I don't know if I'll do it today or not, but if you go to that Discord channel um, and you create a Discord account, basically you can you can chat with other goalies and stuff like that. So what I was thinking about doing is in some live streams, if enough of you guys get in here today, and if I know who you are, and if you promise to act nice, um, I might bring some people in the chat and we can chat for a little while. Um, and then in the future, maybe I'll bring on some, uh, some other goalies to chat as well. Um, but that's uh, one place we can do that. Um, so make sure you follow that link. And then, um, obviously, the YouTube channel, the Instagram, Twitter, and all sorts of other good stuff. So so make sure um, that if you want to keep in touch with the Goalie Crease Network, with myself and everyone else who is a part of it, um, and again, thank you all for being a part of it, because um, it's pretty cool to have a, uh, a nice and welcoming and helpful community. Uh, make sure you join all those things and have some fun. Okay, so should we get started? What do you think? Yeah, what's up, Mr. DiMaggio? All right, you guys ready? You can kind of see him back there. Very large. I need to bring a window over really quick. That way I can see a little bit better. There we go. And I'm going to bring this over here. 
All right, we're good. All right, so you can see them right there, right next to my E-Flex 3s. Um, I'm crazy excited about opening them. So why don't we just go ahead and do that? And we'll go from there. How's that sound? All right, let's do it. All right, let me move some things out of the way first so you guys can actually have a really good view. That's what took me so long today. I wanted to do like an afternoon stream and it ended up being like late afternoon, evening. So whatever. Okay. Ooh. All right. Don't worry, you can't see my address on those things anyway. That and it's written in Russian, so you can't read it. So good luck. Um, okay. So YouTube likes to censor some people's messages, so I'm just letting some of them through. So let me know one thing really quick is because this is a new setup, let me know if the mic does anything weird um, or if you can't hear me very well or if I'm too far away or anything like that. So uh, so just give me a quick heads up if, uh, if anything happens there. Anyway, let's get started. All right, and, and obviously, okay, so one thing I want to talk about really quick, I know you want to see them. I know you want to see them, but let me talk about something really quick. Uh, when did I actually order these pads? Let me look up the email. I think it was September 29th. And for that matter, it was a crazy easy process. So yeah. Okay, so technically I ordered them on October 1st. And on the 26th, they shipped out of Russia. So it took 25 days from my order to shipping. And in fact, I think that was that was like two or three days a little bit longer than he expected. Simply because I think, if I remember correctly, the, the guy who assembled my leg pads, um, he got sick or something like that. And he was out for like a day and a half. And I was like, I, like I was not expecting pads to be in in like three weeks anyway. And then it took them a week to get from Russia to the United States. And I thought for sure it was gonna take like maybe two weeks or maybe get hung up in customs for a while and maybe be like three weeks or three and a half weeks, but no. Um, it only took about a month. Now, one of the things I can see in the chat already that you guys are asking about, um, one of the things I don't talk about is price. And here's the reason why. So there's two reasons for this one. Number one, um, Micklin does handcrafted custom pads. And so every pad price is different depending on what options you get. Um, for your customization. So um, the best way to do it is use their customizer on their website, send in the order, and then Gleb or someone will get back to you and go through everything. Um, the other thing too is that obviously there's an exchange rate involved um, coming from um, Russian uh, currency over to the United States. So it's a little bit wonky. So anyway, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm gonna stop toying with you, I swear. Okay, here we go. I'm not toying with you, I'm trying to answer your questions. All right, I want to make sure I don't cut anything. And bags are a difficult thing to do that in. All right. All right. I can see the pads coming through right here. So let's start there. And I swear I didn't make that hole. Like I didn't I wasn't trying to peek in the pads. I swear. Oh, they look beautiful already. There are no straps. I mean, there's elastic straps. But I didn't get any other straps on these pads. So I'm not as worried about cutting straps. Maybe I should be, though. All right, you can see him peek through. They're coming, I swear. And then one of the things that I normally don't do, but I will do today, uh, I will compare these to other pads I've worn. Um, and the reason why is because these, okay, I gotta look. I don't wanna cut anything. Um, considering so many North American people are really unfamiliar with the Micklin brand, um, I think that it's very deserving to compare it to other manufacturers. Where typically I wouldn't do that. Okay. Oh, wow. These are really light. I was not expecting that. Especially since I had talked with that pro a while ago. Oh, my gosh. 
These are insanely light. I was not expecting that at all. That is cool. What do you guys think? Are you guys excited that I got some color back in my pads? Honestly, like, when I ordered these... I know, I'm scaring you with the scissors. I know. Honestly, like, when I was ordering these, I was like, oh, I really want white and black like I've been getting. But all of you guys are asking for more color again. So I got a little color in these. So it's all right. And then uh, one of the cool things, too, in their customizer... Um is you have the option of using uh, like a regular Gen Pro um, or the embossed material, whatever it's called, like Robocop uh, is what um, CCM uses. Um, so uh, it's very similar to that. Um, so I went ahead and uh, clicked the option to use either one. Um, I really didn't care just kind of to, to figure out, you know, what would they recommend. So this is uh, the Robocop material. You can probably see that a little bit, that texture in the stream. And then this is the regular Gen Pro. So this is... Uh, uh, just regular and then this again is uh, sort of the robocop material or the emboss or however you want to call it that is really cool man there is not a stitch out of place on this thing i mean they are just so insanely light i was not expecting that at all so um so this is kind of cool there's a little tag here that tells you exactly what you uh you ordered so uh, maybe i can get it close to the so the PSZ, kind of get this thing out of the way. There we go. PSZ Pro. Uh, my measurement for A is 71. My measurement for B is 15. My measurement for C is 50. So, um, so that's going to be one thing that I'm really interested to see. How does it compare? Um, because when doing their customizer, they measure things that normally I was not measuring. Or they would say, uh, measure your current pads, but then what is it like? minus it by like a half an inch or something like that um and here let me there's somebody's asking for a link for customizer so let me find that for you really quick that's easy eh, copy paste there you go so for all you guys you can uh click that link and play around with their customizer for their uh their pads or pro ones or pro catcher and pro blocker um all right cool Okay, awesome. All right, let's take a look around this thing. I mean, I hate to keep talking about it, but man, these things are just insanely light. I was not expecting that at all. Like, I'm maneuvering this with one hand. Um, and as expected, it's like a little bit boot heavy, um, which is what you expect from a pad. Um, for First of all, you have more material down here in the boot, right? And so um, a lot of your mobility with a pad will depend on where that balance point is and then how much of that sits on your boot um, and how much of it sits on your lower leg and how quickly you can move your your feet and your calves and, and so on and so forth. So um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the things I mentioned before, um, I didn't get any like traditional straps on this. So um, they are all uh, elastic bands and then um, a regular toe tie, uh, which I'll probably end up replacing with, uh, with my regular stuff. Now this is really interesting. Like, check out this calf. There's... This is interesting. So... Huh. So there's like... Okay, so there's... This connection right here that I'm assuming you'll probably... Actually, for that matter, I guess you don't have to do that one all the time. You can do it either way. Huh. That's pretty cool. So it like wraps all the way around your calf and then you put it through and then back over. So it kind of reminds me of, um, what is it? Brian started doing it first. Um, I can't remember what they called it. I don't know why I can't remember. Um, and then CCM, like especially like Pecorine and some other goalies started doing something really similar to this. Um, but I don't remember it necessarily coming down from the top of the calf. I could be wrong on that. Um, I should probably consult that picture that I posted this morning on Instagram, um, but nonetheless, um, it's really interesting. So let's kind of open up that area just to kind of show you guys what's going on here. So you have some adjustment points on the, uh, technically it's the inside of the calf, but it's kind of like the inside, inside of the calf. 
because the inside of the calf is actually over here. So this is kind of like the inside between um, that, that inner gusset. And then it comes from both sides, so sort of mid calf and then top calf. And that's kind of important for me because I typically keep this one a little bit tighter anyway. Um, so it'll be interesting to, uh, uh, to feel. And then snap that up. And then I guess, see, I don't know like which way are you supposed to, to put your pads on. Like you could do it either way, honestly. But that's pretty cool. All right, so um, about the inside, really smooth material on the inside. I didn't want anything like sure grip or anything or like a Nash material um, just to, uh, to make sure that it doesn't impede any of my rotation or anything. I, t I tend to keep that really loose and then um, also really smooth. Um, so that looks pretty cool. All right. Looks like that will like naturally be a pretty tight leg channel. Like maybe not like super tight, like the CCM super tight, but nonetheless will be tighter than I'm usual or that I'm used to. Um, though I will say like my CCMs, they're not super tight. Um, and I don't wear them super tight, but the one S pads tend to be tighter. Um, so I'm already used to a pad that is like a little bit tighter. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, okay, let's go with the boot. I'm trying to show you guys a little bit about the boot. It looks pretty shallow. Looks like there's like a little bit of rising on each side, but it's not, it's not a ton. So it's not a, a very deep boot, um, which I also prefer. Um, I don't prefer a very deep boot. I like it to sit basically up on my skates a little bit. And then looking at the toe bridge, that's an interesting toe bridge. Like that's, or not really toe bridge, but the toe tie area. So it is sewn in, so it's not removable, but you do have some adjustment options for, uh, for your toes or for your toe ties. So you can either choose traditional middle or you can bring it into uh, to the inside if you want to. That I know a lot of people like that. Let's look at the, uh, the knee really quick too. So, as you guys know, I like a pretty loose knee. And considering, so you saw it there, this was attached up here, and you guys know I'm not going to do that, right? So, what I typically do is take this apart a little bit. There's some Velcro on that side. I'm gonna position that downwards a little bit. Maybe not, maybe not that much. Or here, let's do it the right way, right? All right, usually I'd wear it right about there. So this will end up somewhere right around here-ish. I do that backwards. Yeah, I did it backwards. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. So it'll end up something like that. Maybe maybe not that much, but I'll mess with that later. Um, but that way it opens up my knee channel. This is a nylon material to keep it very smooth too. Um, like I said, I want to make sure that nothing impedes my rotation at all. Um, and usually I don't have anything on the outside. With my CCMs, I have that like outer, outer edge one. And But I have worn this in the past. This is also like flimsy so i'm not worried about this getting in the way because i think if nothing else like if my knee guards hit it or if my pants hit it or something like that it would probably just collapse so i'm not concerned about that because uh, sometimes if if it's like a little too thick or a little too rigid it can run into your pants and then your pants get all wonky and your pads don't come on um just right so uh, but i'm not concerned about that and then here in the middle this is sort of a harder foam it feels like that's on the inside and it's not very thick, if you guys can see that. It's not very thick at all. So that's kind of nice. Because um, that that's one of my main worries with, especially like new pads, and when you don't get like a completely open leg channel or a knee channel like I'm used to, or a knee lock, um, that little extra space here can mean the world of a difference, especially with bulky knee guards. So I'm not that concerned with this, um, considering that's so thin, and then it's also hard. So. It's not going to be like too squishy. I'm not going to lose any rotation or, or time out of that. Um, there is also right here, 
a little um, uh, tie-in area for knee or thigh guards. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, not something I'll use, um, but for those of you out there who uh, who like to tie in your knee guards or your thigh guards, uh, thigh guards, you can certainly do that. I got Irish there for a second. Sorry. And then here, let's open that up again just so you guys can see. So first of all, that kind of comes out. It looks like this would be an area for adding in um, knee straps if you wanted them, like traditional knee straps, um, which I did not get. But it looks like it would probably, would that go behind? Let me see. I don't know if I can stick my finger in that. Don't quote me on that, by the way. Yeah, it goes behind. So I guess they probably um, go through that with the, uh, the traditional uh, strapping there, uh, but I didn't get that. And then opening this up so you guys can see, you can see there's quite a bit of uh, Velcro right there, or sorry, hook and loop enclosure material, whatever it's called. And then some more Velcro over here. That's cool. Check out how large this, uh, this landing pad is. That's thick. And then one of the things I really like that I think really shows the company is paying attention is um, this sort of 3D landing area right here. Seeing if you guys can, yeah, you guys can see it there. So this little area right here, when you land on the knee, it makes it a flat surface between where the landing area is and then where this area is over here. So I like that. Cool. Man, that's beautiful. Nice styling here too. Like that looks really nice. Reminds me a lot of the, uh, the Bauer styling back here. And then just to kind of go through really quickly, like just how thin this pad looks. Like that's, it's really thin, but at the same time, like it's a little stiff. I think it'll probably open up as I use it more, but it's, it's certainly stiff right now. Let me see if I can. Uh... So is there a break up there? Feels like there's a break in there. Yeah, I think there's a break above the knee, internal, not external. And then there's a break under the knee as well, uh, clearly from, from that. And I don't see a break here, but when I went down like that, I kind of felt like there was maybe a little more give at the top, but I don't know. I don't really feel anything in there. So maybe there isn't. Just kind of feels like there is. There's definitely one internally down here, external and internal, you can see the line right there. Man, that is a beautiful looking pad, isn't it? I am really excited to get these out on the ice. Smooth all the way down, beautifully put together. Looks like a little extra protection down here at the toe, just to make sure um, it gives you a little extra durability, which I really like. All right, that is exciting as hell. What do you guys think? Chat's kind of stopped, I don't know why it stopped. What's going on with chat? Looks like CCM and Vaughn made a pad together. A lot of people saying it looks like uh, it looks like a Vaughn pad. I can kind of see that. It kind of looks like uh, like uh, SLRs. Looks pretty good. You hate the colors. What? How do you hate the colors? That makes me sad. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think you actually hate the colors. Um, okay, so one of the quick things about the colors too. So it's not my my traditional uh, light blue and navy. Um, this is actually a black. And then um, this is the light blue, obviously. Uh, how does the boot flex? That's a good question. Um, let me see how I can show you guys. All right, like that. And let's see if I, if I push down. Hmm, that's actually surprisingly flexible. I thought for sure that wasn't gonna move at all. <laughs> and I'm I'm okay with a boot that doesn't move because I tend to keep my pads, my boot, pretty pretty rigid. But that actually moves quite a bit, like a surprising amount. I wasn't expecting that. Can you use leather straps? You can. Um, and they have an option for that on their customizer. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, 
that flexes quite a bit. So if you do like a flexible boot, um, they can certainly make it that way. You can kind of see it over here too. Beautiful. Uh, I thought there was something else that I just saw. Oh yeah, on the inside. This is also that sort of Robocop material. Adds a little bit of durability on that uh, the inside, the inner gusset. Uh, since that can sometimes hit the ice or often hits the ice. And then, that's kind of neat. Let me, let me see how I can show you guys that. Oh, I see now. It's an extension of the padding that's on the inner calf. There's like some extra padding that's like in here. Um, probably not only helps your leg uh, for protection wise, but also uh, probably keeps you relatively stable um, when you're when you're down. Yeah, that's what it looks like it does. It's more for stabilizing than anything. That's pretty cool though. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's do this really quick. Before I put the, the leg pad away, um, let me get out one of my CCM leg pads and we'll compare the sizing because um, I'm really interested to see the sizing. Okay. I feel like maybe I should get the other one. That way I can compare them at the same time. All right, compare the weight really quick. CCMs are definitely heavier. Like, these are like nothing. Like, that's crazy. These I can do that with, but it's like, it's a little heavier, especially in the boot. These are like nothing. That's crazy. All right, cool. All right, let's compare this. Okay, so I got the boot. The boot's aligned. The boot, okay, and this is just for me, of course. Your your sizing might come out a little bit different. And comparing what pads you have now, like if you have like Vons or CCMs or something, it might be a little bit different. But the boots are pretty much the same size, maybe like maybe a quarter of an inch smaller. Um, not a big deal for me. And then for the bottom of where the knees come, that's like, I wish I had a ruler right here. I'm going to say like a half an inch difference uh, lower, which is not a bad thing for me because I wear my pads large, so I could really care less. Like, I can deal with that. That's not a problem. And then looking at the top of the pads, that's almost spot on. In fact, if I, because these are really stiff, especially from not being used, and if I go back in time and make these unstiff, It's the same size. So overall, it's the same length, but the knee break is definitely like a half an inch. I'd probably say a half an inch uh, lower in the Micklands than in the CCMs. Now, one reason that's really, really interesting is because on the, the Micklin uh, customizer, they actually say on there, like, take what's on your current pad and then minus a half an inch or minus an inch or something like that. So that could be one reason why that's a little bit lower. Um, but that's not a concern for me. If it, was, if it was like an inch or more, I might be a little concerned, but I'm not concerned at this point. So let me turn it around and let's compare the internals. All right, let me line these up. The boots, again, are, well, one of them is flexible and one of them is not currently. So just kind of looking at it here, you can see the overall length is the same. And you can see there at the knee, at the knee stacks, you can see that one of them is like maybe a half an inch less than the other one. And that's not a problem at all, especially because honestly, so these are 35 plus ones, by the way, um, the CCMs. And I land not really in the middle, but more like a little bit at the bottom-ish, like center bottom. So the fact that these are a little bit lower, I'm going to land probably right in the middle on these. So, so that's not a bad thing. I'm not concerned about that at all. 
just something like if you're gonna order some Micklins, um, just make sure that the the sizing. Um, if you if you already are on a pad that like is perfect, then make sure that you um, you do order them. Um, I guess probably not at the half inch less or or talk to Glove about it. Honestly, that's cool. That looks great. Like check out like just how smooth and flat this is compared to um, even the Eflex. Excuse me, the Eflex threes, which are a little more rounded um, by design. Um, so that's pretty cool. Robocop material instead of uh, the regular Gen Pro, or on this one is uh, Speed Skin. Just kind of comparing the two. Got more of a rounded calf, similar to the CCMs. And calf attachment points are approximately the same, but of course we already went through the calf strapping is way different on the Micklins. And then just kind of going through on the boot, flip these over, make sure I don't knock anything over. Yeah, I mean, nothing crazy. Really comparable. It just has its own nuances, right? Like every pad does. All right, cool. Put that down. I just cannot get over how light these are. Like I, do I have a scale down here? I don't have a scale down here. But these are insanely light. Like you can you can see like how easily I can manhandle these with one hand. It's pretty crazy. All right. Um, ah, my pad. All right. Just seeing if there's anything like markedly different about these. There shouldn't be, of course. Uh, this is interesting. One thing I missed on the other ones, probably because I couldn't see it. It was on the other side. But here's another attachment point for um, traditional strapping. So someone was asking me before, um, uh, can you have traditional straps? And yes, you can. That is an option. And so I can see that there's the traditional strapping points uh, here and then on the inside, like I showed you guys before. Um, I don't see any traditional strapping points on the rest of the pad. Let me open that up. Let's see what we can see in there. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I don't see any attachment points. Bring that up for you guys. I don't see any traditional strapping points in there. So that's just Velcro. Uh, and I don't think they're on the inside either. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. It's just the strapping. So for whatever reason... They they keep the it's sort of like the adjustable strapping that you see on CCM pads, um, where they'll keep the 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 different strapping points on there. But so they have that at the knee, but they don't have that on the calf. But they do have it at the boot. There's one at the boot. So just like CCM, they have that at the boot, um, and there's where it attaches on the inside. So if you do like um, a boot strap or a behind the boot strap. Uh, it looks like you can add that in pretty easily. Um, even if you got them in from Russia and then decided you wanted a new one, um, you can buy them online. And you could add one in later. Um, I do not use a bootstrap, so that's no concern to me. That is awesome. What a beautiful looking pad. And then uh, really nice embroidery here for the name and, uh, and the model. And this is uh, this is not embroidered, but this is leather. So this is not, you know, like iron on or the the heat treated logos that uh, that some companies are going to now. Uh, that's really classy. Man, that is a beautiful looking pad. Really well put together. I can't wait to get these out on the ice. All right, let's let's take a look at the rest of the stuff, right? All right. Um, okay, how does the weight compare to the the Bauer Odin's? So uh, I don't have Odin's. I have one S pads. I think is that what you're asking, Brian? Let me let me get one of the Brian's out, or let me get one of the Bowers out. Okay. Let me, uh, let me compare sizing on these two. Like, why not? So Bowers, these are 1Ss. These are uh, Bauer Larges. 
Line up the boots. The boots are the exact same measurement. Literally the exact same. There's no difference there at all. There's like uh, maybe a little bit of difference in the the angle, like very slight difference, but the, the boots are literally the same length. Uh, looking at the knees, just like we saw on the CCMs, there's a little bit of difference between where the knees actually go. So it's about a half an inch, again, just like before. I will say the Bowers look whiter, even though they're not. But they, for whatever reason, they just look whiter. Probably because they're not as, uh, they're not as uh, uh, rigid. Uh, like these are like really solid, straight, like a straight, uh, a straight leg that you can get on the CCMs. And these are far more flexible, as you can see. And then interesting too, so the Bowers have that more like a rounded inside and it kind of goes, like it's more rounded up here. It's flat-ish down here. And this is just straight flat all the way down. Just kind of comparing here. Because the, uh, the 1S's, I don't know if the 2S's have this or not. The 1S's had this binding that was here. Which I always thought was a little bit odd. Like, why would you want that on your your landing surface and your sliding surface? Um, I guess I can't throw those away yet. Um, but these don't have that. In fact, it has like this little groove here that allows for um, a more flat surface. It's definitely flatter there. I can kind of show you if I do that. You can see there's that little gap here, but it creates a completely flat surface when you're when you're sliding. Now, uh, the main question was about weight. I don't have a scale, so I can't tell you for sure. I gotta feel it on both hands. They feel lighter than the Bowers. Like there's something, uh, let's kind of go through the balance points of them. Let's do this. I'm kind of running into everything in my, my house now. So I'm going to try to balance it on a finger and figure out where the balance point is on these pads. Okay, so this pad, the Bowers, it's like um, three-fourths of the way up the calf. Uh, so it's a little bit more boot heavy, as you'd expect. Let's try the Micklins. Let's see where this bounces. A little bit harder to bounce. I have stuff in my way. Let me, let me take these straps out. Yeah. So maybe like a little bit higher. So it's almost uh, just underneath the knee is where the balance point of that is. Um, I'll say the Micklins feel lighter, but I can't s for sure say that they are. They just feel like they are, but it could be the balance of the pad that makes it feel that way. Because when I was lifting up those 1S pads, they felt like crazy boot heavy to me. So the balance point is different than the Micklin pads. And if you remember when I first got these out, they felt like even the Micklins felt like a little bit boot heavy, which they always will because you have more, more material in the boot, right? Um, but when I found the balance point, it was surprisingly centered. So I'm really excited to see what will that mean out on the ice, um, especially for like shuffles and sliding and re uh, sliding recoveries, uh, butterfly recoveries. That'll be really interesting. All right, cool. Let's go to the gloves. I'll tell you what. So he sent me the glove pictures first. I need a drink. He sent me um, the uh, the glove pictures first um, because that guy was sick, and so he couldn't give me the pictures just in time. Um, but, man, those gloves look so solid. I can't wait. Oh, they're in, like, their own little bag. Let's 
It's like Christmas all over again. All right, let's see. It's like in a bag, in a bag, in a bag. It's one of those Russian nesting dolls, but goalie, goalie size. Oh my God, there's like, oh, there's another bag. How many bags are there? There we go. Okay, here's the glove. Ooh, that is crazy light. Wow. I can guarantee you that's lighter than the Bauer. That is insane. Uh, and the other thing too, I remember the first time that I wore uh, Bauer 1S pads. Uh, I don't know if I should say this on video or not. The first time I wore Bauer 1S pads for, uh, for Total Goalie, like when I first put them on, I was like, oh, these feel like roll rocket pads. Like they were so light and they felt like a little, not really flimsy, that's not the right word, but they were just different, right? Like they, they weren't like a solid pad, like a CCM. They, they just had a different feel to them. Now, I ended up getting used to it. And the, like even out on the ice for total goalie, that was really easy. Uh, or what is pure hockey now? That was really easy. Um, I'm trying to open up the glove. They, they um, not really sew a shove. They tie it so, shut. Um, but it, it just felt kind of different. Not not as solid as I thought. Um, but uh, But these feel crazy light and solid at the same time. Okay, finally. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, so this is uh, the CSC Pro. So if you're going on the website and you want to see these on the website, CSC Pro. Um, now, uh, somebody just asked me what the break is. That's a great question. Uh, I can't remember what the website said. Did it say 75? Let me look here. Uh, CSC Pro. Oh, there's no, there's no uh, image on there right now. Yeah, 75 uh, angled curve. So this shouldn't be too different from my current glove, which is 600 CCM. Okay. As with any new glove, you got to figure out like all the, all the right parts i can feel that there's a there's a thumb connection in there and i think i can feel a pinky connection like a little little pinky thing yeah there's one in there just gotta find it there we go got it that man that feels really solid it reminds me a lot of my ccm i mean like look at look at the back like that that basically reminds me exactly of a ccm uh, back of the glove, which of course I'm excited about, because clearly that's a that's a glove I'm used to. The cuff seems a little bit uh, shorter is not the right word, um, like just smaller, like not as wide maybe. It's gonna take a little bit of breaking in. This is a pro. Uh, I can feel that that is a pro palm in there. Like that is thick. Not a bad thing, especially against the guys I play, uh, that I play against in the BHL, the famed BHL. That is a great closure. Wow. Yeah, I got one, uh, a single T for that matter. I know some of you guys were, were like, oh, why didn't you get a, a double T? I don't like the looks of a double T. That is a beautiful looking pocket. Nice and deep. This is embroidered, by the way. This is not... Uh, uh, applique or anything like that. This is also embroidered. Just a really classy construction. Nicely thick here. Nice placement for uh, for your stick, for the shaft. This is sewn on. Let's look at the inside. Oh, I don't want to take it off though. Gonna, it's gonna need a, my break-in method. Some some new gloves don't need my break-in method. I can tell this one does. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, it's it's a little stiff, but it, it still feels good. Like I can close it. You can probably see like I have to shake to get it to get it there. Got to work out more, or or break in the glove. Well, so I'll probably break in the glove instead of working out. 
So let's open this up so we can see. Because I can feel there's some different connection points in here. So let's open this up. Let's take that out. Take the cup apart. Okay. You guys can see that. So we have individual finger holes up here. Uh, we have this nice over the back of the hand strapping. Uh, that's what the uh, the pinky uh, strap comes out of. That's a nice touch. Get a nice uh, another back of the hand. So this is back of the fingers, I guess. This is back of the hand, and then as usual, your wrist connection. Man, that is beautiful. That is really nice construction. Let me put this back together really quick. Unless you guys have questions about that. Compare. Okay, hold on. Um, yeah, it looks exactly like a CCM glove to me. Uh, could you compare the area the glove covers compared to your CCM? For example, if you place it flat on the ice, the area covers. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I don't know how I'll do that. I mean, I'll do it on the desk. And that's a really good question, uh, Michael. Michael, what's up, man? Um, that's a great question, especially because I don't know if you guys are going to remember this or not, but was it the P4s, like the original P4s that came out, or was it the XLTs? I think it was the P4s. They had like this weird lip area on the thumb where like any time I tried to put my glove flat down on the ice, it would not go. And it would drive me nuts. Okay, so let, let me do this. Um, okay, let me move some things. I'm going to take this camera. I'm going to put it on my desk. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force my glove down and show you guys what happens. So I'm going to take this down. Sorry if it makes anyone puke. All right. There we go. Okay, so it's a little, it's a little close. Let me back this up a little bit. There we go. So I can't get my hand around there, but let me let me see what I can do. All right, let me get this bag out of the way. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Like, I can't really get my hand over there, necessarily, but let me see if I can get something going on. All right. Let's go this way. Okay, so it looks like this is not necessarily, like, when you put the glove down, it depends on, like, do you... Let me show you guys really quick. Do you put your force on your palm or do you put it on your hand itself so there's some goalies like myself i put it on my palm and i, I pretty much just do this and just kind of lightly tap okay some other goalies put their whole uh their really their fingers and their palm up here and then they just kind of let that rest so it depends on which way you prefer to do it and which way your glove allows you to do it so when i put this on And, and granted, this is not broken in, so that's why I'm kind of giving it an extra little. So you can see that if I do my regular way, there's a little tiny gap right here. It's not very large. It's like maybe a quarter of an inch. It looks probably bigger on the video camera, but it's really not that large. Okay, but if I do the finger method, it closes it up. But you can see it kind of opens up the palm just a little bit in the back. So I think after some time of working this in, I think it'll end up uh, nicely conforming to the ice down here, especially over here. I think that's that's probably the only part that I'm I'm a little worried about, but I think that it'll work out fine uh, once this glove breaks in. And then turning it around so you guys can see. You can see that little gap that's right here. Uh, Puck cannot squish through that. Like that is that barely fits my finger, and it really it doesn't. And then you can see this is completely flat. So that's a really nice flat surface all the way and then here in the back too flat you can see that that gap there but once i push down that gap goes away that's not enough for a puck 
So, I am not concerned about that. Let me bring this back up. Ah, look at the ceiling. All right, is that where it was before? It's probably close enough. Maybe like that. There we go. All right, cool. How's that, Michael? Is that good? Uh, the CCM, like I said, um, that one is more like a, a heel of your hand um, uh, force that puts it flat. Um, and this is a little bit different, um, but I think it should be approximately the same. You know, one that reminds me of that is, um, and Michael, I think you use Brian's, right? So the Brian's one, in my opinion, has more of a, more of like a heel of the hand closure um, when you're forcing it down. Uh, what's the difference between the top of the line set by high-end companies in this set like price and quality and protection so um i mean so i i don't know yet um i'll tell you from like just initial uh, initial view this is in construction and in material looks right in line with the top dogs now this is not speed skin so i don't see that you know, so I don't know if they're going to slide as well. Um, it's also not, I can't remember what Bauer calls their skin thing. Um, but both of those slide really well. So I don't know if this sort of like emboss or Robocop material will slide as well um, as CCMs or Bauer's. So we'll have to see. Um, but uh, I will say in construction and in just general materials, and I would bet in protection because this is really thick right here um i'm gonna bet that it's going to be pretty darn similar that's beautiful but i really don't know yet i'll be able to tell you you know in uh in a month or two or for that matter you know i'll update you on instagram and then i'll do a review you know in two or three months or something and on that note i can guarantee you my review these pads will have puck marks unlike some people's reviews which i find really odd how do you do a review of a pad and there's no puck marks on the pads a little confused. Okay, anyway. Oh my god, I gotta go through the labyrinth of, of bag again. I feel it. Alright. Get rid of that one. Alright, I see it. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna flip around for this one. Here's the blocker. For those of you who don't like cord through your blocker, too bad. There's cord through this blocker. It doesn't bother me any. But it's more like, uh, who is that? Vaughn used to do this more often. Look how flat that sidewall is. That's really flat. It is two-piece, but it's really flat. This is also insanely light. Like, I was not expecting this to be this light um interesting enough like when i hmm i don't know something about it reminds me a lot of no that's not a shot at kvg by the way kvg doesn't do uh review videos as far as i'm aware um uh, something about this remind like just the feel of it like just kind of doing this reminds me a little bit of um a brian's blocker I'm not entirely sure why, um, but something about the feel and maybe the balance a little bit. But let's see, let's see once we put it on. And then for that matter, this is the BS Pro. So this is a Pro blocker. Uh, and let's go around the outside before I put it on. Right. So beautiful material again. Not a stitch out of place that I can see. No binding. I don't like binding. They do offer binding if you do like binding. I don't know why you'd like it. I don't know why Pecorino likes it. I think it's ugly. But nonetheless, you can get it if you want. I guess technically there is a binding, but it's down here. It's not on the outside. Um, and let's look at the inside protection. So... So this is pretty cool. Nice uh, nice opening for your stick. Uh, I can't remember. This reminds me a lot of a CCM. 
uh, like this area right here. I can't remember what they called it. Was it, uh, there was one that was straight and one that was rounded or curved. I can't remember. I think I got the curved one last time. So this is more like maybe a little bit older school CCM. And then let me open this up so you guys can see. I don't want to take this strap out. It'll take me forever to get back in. But so I can kind of show you the inside protection. There's so first of all, there's this really hard, really hard material in there. Like it's really solid. That's not going anywhere. There's not there's not a pillow inside. Like some companies started putting a pillow between there. Yeah, binding increases surface area. <laughs> like, I've heard that argument before, and that is just so ridiculous, isn't it? Like, as if a puck is going to hit the binding and, and deflect off. Like, no. Uh, anyway, uh, there's not a pillow in here like some companies do. Um, but then the, the thumb here is also really thick and really hard. Uh, but like I said, there's no pillow. I'm trying to feel there's like another padding on the inside that I probably can't I probably can't even show you yeah I don't think you're gonna be able to see all the way down there but there's like a rounded pad down in there that that maybe gives your your thumb a little bit extra protection down there and it's rounded so it's anatomically correct which makes a lot of sense so let's uh let's look at the palm here too and the finger protection let's look at the finger protection first so you see 360 protection out here. There's some hard foam in here. And then there's some more hard foam in here. So you have you have all around, well, I guess it's not 360, but you know what I mean. There's all around your finger protection. And then out here on the outside of the pinky, there's some more hard foam in there. All right, cool. And then, of course, you have <coughs> your wrist strap. Let's take a look at the glove itself that's on the inside. Typical materials up here. There's a little bit of uh, mesh at the end of the fingers. Keeps your fingers a little bit cooler, I'm sure. I see there's two, there's two connection points for the elastic. You can see that right there. That way it keeps your uh, your finger protection right here down and covering your finger. So that's good. A lot of companies, uh, uh, at least for a long time, they, they didn't see that. And that was an oversight. We can see this sort of a sure grip material, more like a Nash material down here. I guess this is really more like Nash. This is more like sure grip. If you're familiar with that from CCM pads, gives you a little bit extra uh, grip there. Uh, putting it in, you guys know what tests I like to do, right? All right, first of all, I'm going to open this up just a little bit. I'll say I found one thing so far that I'm not sure about. We'll, we'll have to see how it plays. But let me show you this really quick. Check out that, that index finger. Like... I wish the index finger, I could feel it, like it was tugging on me a little bit. And if I open this up just a little bit, where's... Try and do it in a mirrored perspective over here. The I need that thumb out of the way. How do I get the thumb out of the way? There we go. You can see the index finger is like slightly towards the, uh, towards the inside. You can see it's kind of it's curved to that side. I wish it was straighter, like the other fingers are, but maybe that'll be a little bit different once uh, once I'm out there and playing. But you can kind of see it's kind of curved a little bit to the inside. I think I'd probably rather it be more in the middle, like the middle, the middle finger right here is more in the middle, and the ring finger over here. Um, so I don't know if that's an oversight or if that's by design. Um, I don't really feel it when I grip, but I could feel it when I first put my, my hand in. I could feel a little tug.
Okay. Awesome. And then one thing you guys probably saw me do that's just really quickly. Um, I don't really like a, a wrist strap here. Um, but you still have to kind of keep it on there because that's what keeps your sidewall um, of the blocker in. So you still kind of have to have it there. So I, I generally leave it really loose. And then I often take these this cording out. Um, but nonetheless, it feels really open. This is actually a difference in design than what they typically do. Let me bring that back over. Um, so before, uh, he was actually showing me some pictures that this is a brand new design for them that's starting with this blocker right here. So that's pretty cool. Um, before, this was much smaller. And then this seemed to connect like down more. So it was more kind of like that. And you'll see that in their pictures that are on their website. Um, but, uh, but they put this a little bit higher. And then this right here is more like the Premiere, uh, the CCM Premiere blocker, um, in that it's an open design, uh, whereas the the CCM E-Flex design, um, at least traditionally, had more of a closed cuff uh, for the blocker. Now, you guys know the test I like to do here is balance, and that is perfectly balanced. That's interesting. Absolutely perfectly balanced. That's cool. Like some blockers will like tip a little bit or tip that way a little bit, but this one, that's great. There's kind of, I can't remember if this is in other gloves or other blockers or not. Um, I didn't see this little secondary protection pad right here that protects your index finger. So that's kind of cool. And then it looks like it's high enough that it offers you really good protection but doesn't get in the way of your stick. So I'm interested to see how that works and if that does offer you additional protection. It looks like it would. That's pretty cool. But really, I guess for that matter, really this right here is a solid design. And then this side right here that has like a hard piece of foam in it, like a harder piece of foam, um, that's what offers you the additional protection. So that's cool. That's a cool design. I, can't, I don't remember seeing that before. It could be in another glove. I have no idea. But it looks great. And then one thing that I want to point out too that I can see now. So that new material that's in there. Let's see if I can bring this up. This kind of floats a little bit right here. So that it allows you some, some mobility here to allow for your stick. So it's not really rigid or really stiff and it won't impede your stick. Uh, instead, it just kind of moves up and out of the way. That's a really good design feature. I have seen that, um, at least something kind of similar, uh, where you could sort of Velcro it up a little bit higher, and that's typically what I'd do. Um, this is probably the first time I've seen like more of a, a mobile design or a variable design there. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Man, that is really light. What a cool set. All right. Okay. What uh, what questions do you guys have? Uh, now, Ryan, I think I've already seen you ask this like multiple times, but uh, I went through already the reasons I will not say how much they are. And um, there's two reasons for that. And just to kind of go over that again with everyone, the reason why I won't say how much these were, and I know that's a, that's a big uh, question, um, is because first of all, these are all handcrafted custom pads. Um, and so... The price for them is variable depending on what options or customization options you have. So it's always best to use your customizer online and then talk with Gleb or someone afterwards uh, to get your actual price. Um, so I can't guarantee you that the price that that I would get would be the same that you would get. Um, the other thing too is that there's an exchange rate involved um, that especially right now like is crazy variable. So I can't I can't tell you whether you know it's going to be like you know, 70 cents on a dollar or 80 cents on a dollar or, or what that, what that ends up equating to. So, um, any new gear for the season? Yeah. These, these Chris, though, my, my team is not baby blue and black, but nonetheless, I don't care. It looks great. looks beautiful. And I'm excited. So I don't care. Um, do I like this warrior C or one sticks? I love my Sierra one sticks. I hope I never have to change. Um, I know they, they've come out with some new ones, and I'm sure they're they're good, too. But I really like my CR ones. Um, oh, Dan. Um, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what what you say about KHL? Like what what do I think about the KHL? Um, I mean, so we don't get KHL games over here in North America. So um, I have actually seen some on some feeds, um, but uh, but typically we don't uh, we don't get the feeds and we don't get to watch them. Um, it's it's certainly a different kind of of play, right? Like, I'm not really sure, like, why it's different necessarily, but you see some guys who are over there who, like, would be, like, glorified AHLers in the AHL, but they do really well in the KHL. But then you have some, like, bonafide KHL superstars, um, like Kovalchuk, who can come over here and, and play perfectly in the NHL, too. So I don't really understand what the difference in the game is, uh, to be honest. So, and yes, Rick, those are in your colors, and no, you may not have them. <laughs> Um, yeah, Tanner. So it looks like the straight finger protection from CCM. That's right. Yeah. Straight finger. Um, as opposed to what well, the other one was the rounded finger. If I remember correctly. Uh, Kamsky asks, do you still sit on your pads? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And if I take like, if I take a long enough break between using some pads. So, um, I did this with the E-Flex threes last time I used them because I was using the Bowers for a few games and then the the E Flex threes I got them and I was like oh geez these are you know a little stiff again, um, so I went ahead and uh, sat on them again um, and it was great works every time I don't care what people say. So the other day like I can't remember who it was or where it was they're like hey are you the guy who sits on his pads and I was like yeah yeah I am. Uh, for the Sierra one sticks what curve do I recommend I use the quick I definitely recommend that one honestly I I don't uh, I don't recommend any other um, curve except for the quick. And the main reason why is because, so blades first and foremost are for blocking the puck and then secondary are for shooting the puck. And way too many goalies out there who are not good enough um, get this crazy curve on their stick. And they're like, yeah, I can lift it like 20 feet in the air. And it's like, great, but did you stop the last five hole shot? So, you know, you see these goalies who are like, they're really excited about shooting the puck. And if you're really excited about shooting the puck, become a defenseman. Okay. But if you're really excited about stopping pucks, become a goalie and, and first and foremost, get a, um, get a curve that stops five hole shots that you are really good at deflecting shots into the corners. And then second or third in that case, uh, for shooting or specifically for passing, I think is much more important than shooting. Um, do I think I can stop Austin Matthews? No. No, I don't. If he shot at me 10 times, um, he would probably score nine and miss the net once. I probably wouldn't stop any of them. Um, Vaughn does the, the double finger guard. Okay. I'm not as familiar with Vaughn gear, honestly. So, uh, so that's cool to know. Uh, can I show the gear again? Yeah, I'll just show it like really briefly. Um, I know that, well, you know, there's still like 55 people watching at a time. We had like a hundred or something crazy. So, uh, so I won't go through everything again, but just like very, very quickly. Here's the gear. Very, very comparable blocker uh, to CCM construction, but seems to be way lighter in my opinion. Really well balanced. It's uh, it's sort of an equal balance pad, so it's not to uh, the inside or the outside. Um, it's very stable. Here's the glove. A lot of people said this reminds them of a Vaughn glove, which I'm very surprised about because to me, it reminds me a whole lot of a CCM glove. Um, especially the back, the back, that is almost, that, that is almost entirely CCM. And then I'll show you the inside again, just really quick. If I can get this out. So you can see individual finger stalls with mesh. Keep your hand a little bit uh, cooler. You can see back of the finger uh, strapping. Let me open the cuff up. Keep that down. So back of the finger elastic, back of the hand strap, and then a wrist strap as well. Uh, the other thing with this gear that I also mentioned that's like the third time today I've hit myself in the face with the strap. That's not good. I get a concussion. 
Um, the other thing that I found really interesting with this glove is that it is definitely a pro palm. Like I can feel it is a thicker palm right here. And then this is also pretty thick too. So it's going to take me a little bit to, uh, like I can get it closed ish, right? Urgh, there we go. So it'll get there in time, but I'm going to have to definitely do the break-in method on this one. Or honestly, like that, that's my most seen video is the break-in method, like how to break in a glove, um, the best way. Um, and it's a great break-in method. Like there's no doubt about it. It's tried and true. It's the keeps method plus some extra stuff on top of it that I think opens up, um, the, the closure uh, opens up basically the face of the glove a little bit better. Um, and it also gives you a, a little bit more closure. Um, uh, but for the most part, like modern gloves, they come pretty well broken in. So I just go out there and I use it. And then in like three to five skates, it's good enough to, to do whatever I want. So, and then <clears throat> the thing that everyone is most si excited about, I'm sure the leg pads, again, just to kind of go through a couple crazy things, insanely light, like like you can see, this is taking me zero effort. It takes me more effort to try to close the glove right now with that pro palm than it does to do this with the entire leg pad. Like this is insane. This is insanely light. Uh, really thin profile. Uh, and then the other really interesting part about this pad um, would be these straps down here, the calf straps. And how it kind of gives you more of a, a tighter feel down here. And if I open this up right here, you can see this is sort of like a triangle padding right here uh, to keep all sides of this calf in line. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about using that and, and figuring out, you know, where, where do I really like these straps to be? How tight do I want them? Because these are adjustable on the insides. Uh, so how tight do I want that one uh, compared to all the rest? Uh, and then two, like just really quickly, so you guys can go on their website and you can see um, each of the models that I got. This one right here is the PSZ Pro uh, pad. And then here's my measurements. A is 71, B is 15, C is 50. And then just like really quickly again, when I compared the pads to both my, um, my CCMs and my Bowers, it was about a half an inch shorter uh, in the knee than those pads. So the Micklins are a half an inch with those measurements, a half an inch shorter than my 35 plus one uh, CCMs and my large Bowers. Um, all right. All right, cool. Any special tech or materials for the course? You know, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't see anything on their website. That, oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Pads. Uh, PSZ Pro. Okay, so just kind of reading their website. So this is one of the things about me. Like I, I honestly could care less about the technology. Like most technology is just marketing speak. So when they're saying like these have like ultra tech rebound control, it's like that doesn't mean anything. You know, how does it feel? How does it perform out there? It's like when I when I read or watch some other people's reviews and they're like, this has this great technology in it. It's like, yeah, but like how'd it feel out there? So like, you know, was it good? And why are there no puck marks on your pads? So <laughs> if you were using them, there should be puck marks. Um, and, and so on their website, it says there's a unique Z style full front with and I'm I don't know what that means. Like, is that referring to the graphic? I don't have a clue. Uh, with one millimeter plastic and ultra foam protection for exact unrebound control. So if I'm going to try to transliterate that into English, what that probably means is that uh, the foam that is in their pads, if I'm going for exact unrebound control, it's probably going to keep it closer to my pad uh, than, than bounce off. So... So that's a great question. I have no idea how these pads are going to perform. Like, are they going to perform more like my old premieres did or like my Bauer 1S pads do? And it'll kick those rebounds right out, like right 
that, that's going to be really interesting. And the first game that I play in these is going to be like, oh my god, I have no idea where, where any of these pucks are going. Um, but it'll be fun, if nothing else. Hopefully we play a terrible team. Um, or is it going to be more like my E-Flex pads? And you can take a full-on slapper, and it'll hit the front of my pad, and then it'll just stop, right? So I don't know how these pads are going to play. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. Um, <clears throat> I should try Brian's. It's amazing. Um, I'd like to try them someday. I, I have tried some before. Um, no, 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 Mr. MG. It is ultra, uh, sorry, exact unrebound control. Un, so, I'm, so I'm translating that to mean that it does not, it does not rebound. I'm, I think. We'll see. That'll be fun. Uh, and that, honestly, like, that's, that's part of the fun of these pads, right? Like, first of all, these are pads you don't see in North America. I have literally never seen these pads live before, ever. Um, when I was doing a little bit of uh, research, there, oddly enough, there was a guy also here in St. Louis, Missouri, who was like selling some Micklin pads like years ago. And um, But I have never seen a pair of Micklin pads live. So I have no idea how they're going to play. I have very little information about the pads, but on a whim, I went and made an order because... How cool is it to like be one of the only North American goalies who have some Micklin pads who can who can come here and tell you guys about these pads, and uh, uh, and whatnot. So it, it's pretty cool. Um, okay. Well, uh, okay. Um, oh yeah, Chris. For okay, so first of all, Chris, I'm sorry. So he, uh, Chris had asked, any way of doing a how-to video on getting dressed? And that is a video I keep meaning to do, like, forever. Um, and to Mr. MG's point, like, it is, it is personal preference. Um, at the same time, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of right and wrong when it comes to goalie equipment and putting it on. And so, like, there are some people who are, like, really adamant that the way that they put on their equipment is right or the way that they hold their stick is right. And there are some goalies who are different, and I guess whatever works best for you. But there is a right way and a wrong way to do most things. So I could do a video like that. It's just honestly, um, I'd, I'd have to get some time at a rink, and at, preferably at a rink. I don't really want to do that in the basement, You're right, right? In my basement office, um, how to get dressed. Um, so uh, I really need to do that one at a rink. Uh, but I'd love to do that video. Uh, do your E-Flex also have both internal and external break below the knee? Yes, they do. Uh, yes, they do. I had to remember if there was an external break. Um, okay. What else we got here? I should try uh, Kineski. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have any comment on that. Um. All right. What else we got here? Have I tried the JRZ stuff? No, I haven't. Sorry, I have to go like way back now. Binding prevents the perimeter of the blocker from dents. I don't know, Jacob. I cannot say that I have ever had a blocker get dented on the perimeter or elsewhere. And I I don't necessarily see... Okay, so here's one of the things, like when it comes to like manufacturing stuff. So bindingless really just means that the binding is on the inside. Okay, so there, there's not like a binding material, but a binding just covers up where two pieces of material are uh, are sewn together, right? So bindingless basically just means that they folded the material in and then sewed it from the inside out as opposed to the outside and then put a binding on the outside to hide that so it looks better. So bindingless just means they folded it in and then they they sewed it on the inside sort of they did it like this and then they turned it inside out okay so like binding is not going to keep your blocker from from getting dented but nor have i ever had a blocker get dented at least not since like since like maybe like the 590 days or something i'm sure some other people have but like it it takes a lot 
Anyway. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just reading some other questions. Uh, there's some that I've already answered, so I'm just kind of skipping over those. Um, I already did those. Um, if you guys have, if you guys do have more questions, yeah. So, do the legs? Okay, uh, do the leg pads have good sliding? So I don't know that yet. I haven't taken these out on the ice yet. I literally just opened the bag. I got them in yesterday. It has been driving me nuts for uh, about twenty eight hours now. Um, what is the landing gear internal material? That's a good question, Michael. I didn't look at that. Uh, so he was asking, like, this right here on the landing gear, what is this material? So he was asking if it is similar to the CCM Sure Grip or Nash. Uh, it is not. Or, or, like, even, like, right here. This is all nylon here. And I'm pretty sure that was something that's on the customizer that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get nylon. Um, it does also look like if I really wanted to, I could cut this off just like I do with, uh, yeah, I could definitely cut that off. Uh, just like I do with CCM pads, um, at least that before they gave me the option to take that out. Um, uh, uh, I could actually remove this if I wanted to. Uh, and I might, I don't know. Because I this is not sewn all the way down. I can stick, you can see, I can stick my finger right there. So all I have to do is cut around that cord in fact, this is easier because there's less cord to cut through. Or there's less cord to not cut through, for that matter. To cut around is what I mean. Um, but if I want, what I'll probably do, I'll use it like this for a few games and then see if I if I don't mind this being here and if I don't mind uh, this outer part being here. And then I'll make a decision. Um, if it was a CCM, I'd take it out right now because I already know. Um, with the Micklins and with this being... Uh, a little more flimsy, so there's this isn't like a solid block that I'd be more concerned about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try it first and then go from there. Um, but I could definitely see that that might be something I remove uh, just as personal preference. And then also just as personal preference, I might remove this little tab that I think probably a lot of you guys use for your knee protection or your thigh guard protection. Uh, I have no use for that, um, so I might just remove that too um, just because I think it looks better. But outside of that, I don't foresee any large changes to the pads okay um were there any new questions okay um how do okay when am i on the ice next um that is a great question when am i on the ice next um so i guess technically the next time i'm on the ice we have a bye week this week um but uh rick if you're there rick's been trying to get me in on a, a thursday session uh, at a local rink and, uh, and every time he asks me, I, I never can. Um, so I don't know if I'm actually available on Thursday or if that spot's available on Thursday, but I might play Thursday if Rick, if Rick needs me to. Um, if he doesn't, it'll probably be n not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. So it is a very long time uh, before I play on them again, which kind of stink, kind of stinks. Um, okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. How do I think the glove will perform? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, first of all, it is insanely light. Uh, and then it is not only insanely light, but it also feels solid. And outside of, like, outside of needing to break it in, and you can already see, like, I can close the puck, or I can close the glove. That's not a big deal. Um, but... Uh, this is a lot of protection here that I'm not used to. This is definitely thicker. Um, so I have no no concerns about the protection at all. I think the only thing I'm probably going to have to break in this glove to do is shoot very well, right? So you have this notch right here for the the uh, for the stick. That's really nice. Um, though that notch just, it does kind of run into the, the, the glove cuff down here. So that'll be a little bit interesting. Um, but I don't really have any concerns about the glove right now. So uh, I think it's going to perform just fine. I don't see why it wouldn't. <sighs> okay. Um, do your E-Flex 
also have both. Okay, you already asked. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's the difference between a skate lace pocket and a nylon one? Okay, so. Okay, so a lot of people will take a skate lace pocket and they'll remove this nylon cording and they'll put in skate lace. So the reason they do that tends to be because like, there's there's two main things. So first of all, if you want, you can make your um, your pocket deeper and that will allow you to control the puck easier, right? So it goes in, it's not gonna jump back out. Um, it's relatively easy, it's gonna be deeper. It might be illegal in the NHL, but I don't think any of us are playing in the NHL. So what's it matter, really matter, right? The other thing too is that the theory is that um, because skate lace is softer and there's a little more give to it, that it cradles the puck a little bit better too. So like I said, it's going to stay deep in the pocket. It's going to stay there. It's not going to pop back out. Um, the reason I don't get skate lace pocket, uh, I think it's ugly. I think it's terribly ugly. It's like, it reminds me of like spider legs, like tarantula spider legs all over your glove. And it's like, you had this beautiful glove here and then you put spider legs all over, all over your, your pocket. So I don't know. People like it. I think it looks ugly, whatever. The same thing goes with the double T and the, the single T. The theory with the, the double T is that it allows better vision through it. And my CCM up there has a double T and I agree with that. Like, that definitely has better vision through your your uh, uh, through the T, so that you can see when you catch a puck, like either right in front of your face or even from the side, you can still see it a little bit better. Uh, nonetheless, I still find it extremely ugly, um, and I like the look of the single T. Uh, and for that matter, I especially love the look of the single T, specifically with this point. Uh, that is something that CCM has done ever since the Coho days. Yeah, my co-hosts over there have the same thing, and uh, and I love the look of that thing. So it's it's just personal preference. I'm willing to not have like the number one like way to set up everything every time, so long as I look good doing it, and it's not going to like adversely affect me. So if I'm not giving up a goal because of the way that I have my pads, and I really don't care, you know, it's good enough, and I look good. So. Okay. Have I used the co-host yet? Yes. I used them one game. I have video. I won. I made one really cool old school save. Um, I'm tempted to even show you guys. Do I? Hold on one second here. Let me see if I have, I'm sure I have that video. Where did I put it though? Give me one second. Go increase net videos. All right. Uh, hopefully this isn't loud for you guys. Hold on. You're not gonna be able to see it just yet. Uh, no, those are Bowers. All right, those are Bowers. What is this? Oh, that's an old video. I don't even have those pads anymore. Um, here's another one. Those are CCMs. It might actually still be on the, it's an H and A game. I haven't played H and A in forever. What is this? Those are really old. Those are my red and white E-Flex. Is it threes? Yeah. Um, they must not be on the computer yet. Either that or I bet I transferred it to my editing laptop and I haven't edited it back or I haven't added it back out yet. Um, so I, I can't show you right now. Sorry. It was a ton of fun though. I could have sworn I had transferred that. Oh, well. Okay. Somebody said my mic is too low. Is my mic still too low? Did it change? Let me know, guys. Um... Am I excited for the E-Flex 4s? Yeah, I guess. I'm not planning on getting them. Like, pads are so expensive now. Um, I'm pretty much only planning to get pads that, like, 
are really different or that offer something like crazy new, you know, because like if, if it offers you something like iteratively new or iteratively better, like, is it really worth spending three grand for a new set compared to like, I can spend a comparable amount of money on Micklin pads and get something really different to, to try them out. So, so yeah. I'm not planning on getting them. Um, okay, I got I gotta go play hockey myself. Have a good one. Okay, yeah. You too, Theo. Um oh, and you're the reason I ended up getting the call five eighty nine and I'm so glad it's my favorite. Oh the Coho five eighty nine. Oh yeah, cool. Those are great pads too. Uh I do wish I could try those new Cohos. They they look really similar to CCMs, but there's some differences there that'd be fun to use. Am I gonna buy the Warrior G fours? Not planning on it. Uh, there's, hmm, there's some different things there too. I don't know. Um, Chris, where do you live? He said, uh, move my way, Tom, you'd be on the ice all the time. You know, what's funny though about that is, um, I don't know if you live in like Toronto or something like that. I got some buddies who live in Toronto and it's actually like really hard to find ice time there because like there are so many goalies. And actually, the same thing kind of happens here in St. Louis. That like we're a small market, but we have a crazy amount of goalies, and we have a crazy amount of people who like want to try to become goalies. So it's a it's a little bit different there too. Um, so anyway, oh, you know what happened there? Here, hold on. I'll just leave this up. I don't care. Um. Okay. Uh, problem with pads is like there's no massive difference like the 2x and the 1x there isn't much difference compared to the bower skates with no cowling like we need massive changes to to kit um and yeah uh I, you know i agree with that where like if i'm gonna spend three thousand dollars to upgrade my equipment and like even if i can sell my current set for a thousand so it's going to cost you two grand to upgrade your set that set sure as hell better perform better than that last set did right so i'm not looking for an iterative change i'm looking for a paradigm shift change so a paradigm shift change would be something like adding speed skin or um adding custom graphics from bauer like printed graphics that's going to be cool whenever they do that for consumers um or uh with like the odin pads when those were being developed going to a way lighter core and uh, a one piece face. So those are like paradigm shift changes that I'm looking for if I'm gonna spend that amount of money. Um, otherwise, I wanna try things that are a little bit different, uh, like Micklin pads, something you don't see every day. Um, or like when I tried the Paso Chesty, um, that's another one. It's uh, It had some traditional portions of the Chesty, but it was enough difference that I was willing to invest the time and resources to give it a whirl and, and then tell you guys about it and it ends up working out really well. So, uh, Oh, Chris, you're in the London area. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, do I follow VO goalie on YouTube? I have no idea. Let me look. I have no idea who VO goalie is, but I, I might, I don't know. I probably do not voice actor by day beer league goalie by night weekly videos every thursday just one guy's take on the world of ice hockey goaltending yeah cool awesome i don't know who he is i haven't watched his videos but uh but but good on him 500 subscribers get at it that's cool uh, you know, that's kind of the fun part about uh, about YouTube, right? Is like, have fun with it. Put up your videos. Um, you know, there's some people who they watch my videos. Uh, I, I, I seem to be very like, um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't remember. Basically, you either like really like me or you really don't like me. It's like some people like really don't like me for some reason. Uh, and other people like will watch my game videos to get themselves ready for their games. And that's cool. Like I'm, I'm not the best goalie in the world, but I try to have fun with it. And uh, 
And if nothing else, you know, I try to make good saves. I don't try to make like crazy saves. Sometimes I get to make crazy saves and I get, get them on video and I like to have fun with them. Um, but yeah, but you know, ultimately the goalie crease network is really all about welcoming goalies and supporting each other. And so that's why I have the Facebook group, uh, where anyone's well, welcome to join and keep a positive attitude and help others. And you're more than welcome to post up your own videos on there and get feedback and all sorts of cool stuff. So, so yeah, it, it's more laid back, like Chris said. So, um, so that's what the Glory Cruise Network is about. And that's, that's how I like it. Um, come down my way for a visit, play some hockey. I'd love to, man. That'd be fun. Uh, there was some talk for a while about a few of us getting together and doing some things. I don't know whatever happened to that. I need to shave. What's up with this? Uh, how stiff are the pads? So, okay. So that's a good question. Um, so like looking at them, you would think they're like insanely stiff. Um, but they're really not. Uh, they're, they're as stiff as I would expect a brand new pad to be. So... I can, I can do that and see like this kind of makes me think there's, there might be some internal break up there, but I can't, I can't see one from the front. So I don't know if there actually is one or not. There's clearly a break, you know, internal and external right here. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not crazy stiff. And then the boot one more time, pretty flexible, surprisingly flexible. So they look really stiff, but really they're not. Cool. Um, okay. So those are the pads. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching uh, watching the uh, the live stream unboxing. It it killed me taking twenty eight hours or whatever it was to just stare at that the body bag of my uh, of my new goalie gear over there. But it was a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. It looks like the questions are dwindling down. The people are dwindling down. We got like 40 something right now. Um, but that's cool. Um, we had, I think, up to like over 100 at one point, which is pretty cool. Sit on those pads and you're going to get slingshot. They are stiff. They're, they're not that stiff. That and when I, when I sit on them, they're not, they're not stiff either. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and stop the, uh, the live stream uh, now. Uh, but I do want to mention again, uh, over there on the left side of the video, um, you can see if you, um, so first of all, uh, I have had some requests to like make donations to the channel and you are more than welcome to do that. Anything that I make on this channel immediately goes back into the channel. So that's what allows me to do things like buy new webcams or buy new stuff like the that, stuff that's back there, stuff that I can review, uh, cameras, uh, audio i was looking at upgrading my um, audio capabilities the other day um so if you do want to make a donation you're more than welcome to you certainly don't have to i don't care um there is a merch store as well so that's set up through Streamlabs as well you can go to that same link and you can buy goalie crease network t-shirts towels drawstring bags i feel like i'm missing something else and i can't remember what it is now but most people ask for like shirts and towels so if you do want something like that that's on there as well. You're more than happy to. Um, I created a Discord channel. If you want to chat with other goalies, I can see we already have, well, we have one guy signed up right now. Um, but if you do want to, to come on and just chat with other goalies, I made a Discord channel just for Goalie Crease Network uh, users. Uh, in the future, in live streams, if you are... Funny enough, this entire time I've been in an in, in open chat. So if you guys actually like join this chat, you guys could have been talking the whole time. Um, and I, would, I wouldn't have a clue because I don't have my headphones on. Um, but, uh, but in the future, you know, if you come into the chat, um, I might bring in one or two goalies and we can chat live for everyone. That'd be kind of fun to talk about NHL goalies or maybe some things that happened in, uh, in one of your recent games. Um, going down, um, clearly you are subscribed, uh, to the YouTube channel already. However, if you have friends or other goalies or whatnot who are not yet subscribed, make sure that they are because there are lots of new videos and lots of, uh, new tips and review videos coming up, including the reviews of these, uh, these Micklin pads. I would expect it's probably going to take me two months, two, two to three months to review these pads. 
Um, but we're in the middle of the season, so I might get in, might get some more ice time <clears throat> and, uh, and get those. And of course, Instagram, uh, you guys know I post like five times a day on Instagram. It's, it's insane. Um, it's probably too much, but I like to, so Instagram is like so much fun for me cause I can put up a thing about like, Hey, this guy got a shutout last night or Hey, it's this uh, pro goalie's birthday or check out this cool setup from Brian's. Um, and then I might post up something funny. That's like, Hey, on your way to the game, you know, somebody stole your pads and, and, but these three sets are available. Which one do you choose? And it's a picture of like three goalies who, um, who are all on the same team or something. And so, you know, it's just kind of like having fun. Um, so that's what the, the Instagram channel, um, allows. And then, uh, Twitter don't really do much with that. Uh, but anyway, and then we have a few sponsors down there, muscle Mac, um, uh, Iwi, and then, uh, flowing. So, um, why are you putting, no, I don't Steven, Steve for that matter. Um, heck for a while I was posting like 14 times a day. It was ridiculous. So I stopped doing that. But anyway, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to all those things that you follow all those things. Hit that uh, like, follow, subscribe, whatever whatever the hell button it is. I don't have a clue what it is for all these social media channels anymore. I'm just having fun. But anyway, if you guys do have questions, um, of course, you are more than welcome. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat you, Stephen, but that's hilarious. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, if you guys, have, do you have, <laughs> if you guys do have questions, make sure that you... Uh, <laughs> That you post them below here. Uh, I will hopefully get back to your questions. I'm like 200 questions behind at this point, but I swear to God, I will try to get to your question sometime in the next decade. Um, or you are more than welcome to follow the Instagram and DM me some questions. I talk to people all the time on there. That's a little bit easier than YouTube. Um, but anyway, hopefully you guys have a, uh, a wonderful day. Um, as always, if you have any questions or need anything, let me know. Uh, otherwise, good luck, and I will see you out on the ice. Have fun.